Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get started. First up today, we are making a boho style cloche. So I found this glass piece at the Goodwill for $1.99 and you know I was picking that up. I also grabbed these little cork, um, what are they like hot plate things from Ikea, like that you would set something hot on top of so it doesn't ruin your countertop. And it was the perfect size for the base of my cloche. So what I'm gonna do is take some 12 millimeter beads and I'm just gonna start placing them all around the outside of the cork part where it's going to kind of form that edge or that lip around our glass piece to form the cloche. This is such an easy DIY project. I know a lot of cloches are more in that farmhouse style, but I wanted to make it a little bit more modern and fit into my home decor style. So when you're placing the beads down, I put them with the holes of the beads facing like sideways so that I, they were facing each other and I didn't have to worry about, you know, filling in any holes. So once I got that all the way around, I did have to use a 10 millimeter bead to fit in that last little space, but that'll be in the back and no one's going to notice. Next up, I'm taking these little wood round pieces that I believe I got these from Hobby Lobby and I'm just taking out three of the smaller sizes and then I'm gonna use some greenery that I cut down off of a pick. And all we're gonna do is hot glue that greenery down to the base of these wood rounds. And that's it for this one, guys. This is so easy and it looks so modern and so beautiful styled on my bookshelf. I just love the modern simplicity of this piece and the way I styled it on my bookshelf. I have the solo wood flowers sitting right in front of it. I think that adds the perfect little detail. I do have an affiliate link for them. I will leave it in my description box. Stay tuned for a video coming very soon all about the solo wood flowers. Next up, we have this boho style wall hanging and I just love the colors in this piece. So I have this wire wreath form. Is it a wreath form? I don't know, wire hoop that I got from the Dollar Tree and it just has this welcome word across the center of it. So I took my wire cutters and just snipped it right off and it came off pretty easily. For that second one, I just twisted it around a few times and that snapped it off. I don't know why I didn't use my wire cutters there. I mean, I had them sitting right there. But anyways, then I'm taking this metallic spray paint. It is in a antique brass color and just spray painted my hoop. While that's drying, I am picking out my yarn colors. So I ended up going with that light tan color, the camel color, that green, and then also black and white. I was debating on the navy, but I didn't end up liking that. I liked the green a little bit better instead. So then I'm just gonna cut down all of my yarns and I cut way too many because I had a different plan when I started this, um, but I just cut them to about four feet each. And then I took my white, the tan and the camel color and I started making a braid. So you'll see here that I have two of each color there but I ended up redoing that with only one strand of each color because this ended up being a little bit too thick. Once I had all of my yarns cut I'm just going to start looping them through my hoop. So this particular hoop has that hanger on the back of it, the metal one, and it is like welded onto that. So I just used it to my advantage for the center of my wall hanging and I put my first strand through that hanger on the back. So I'm going to show you several times and get very close on exactly what I'm doing, but I want you to see, see it 
first before I try to explain it, I guess. So we're gonna start wrapping the yarns around the bottom as well to create a second knot so that these stay in place. So the way that I am creating this, I'm taking my strand, I separated them at the bottom after I created my lark's head, and then I am wrapping it around one side, wrapping it around the next side, and then pulling the end of the string through that loop. Don't worry, I am going to show you this several more times and I'm gonna get real nice and close for you. But I started out with my white strands and I added three of these and then I moved on to adding on my braided piece and it's just one of the braid. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, create my lark's head knot at the top, put my strands underneath of my hoop. <laughs> I think I do it backwards there. Maybe not. Okay, anyways, I don't know what I did there, but here you can see I'm creating my lark's head knot. So you wrap your, pull your strings through the loop that you put underneath of the wire form and then pull that tight. I know I just explained that's super weird, but there are so many other videos on how to create a lark's head knot. It is the simplest macrame knot. So then you take both of the ends of your string and you put them underneath of the wire hoop. And then we're going to separate them. So now I'm taking the end and I'm wrapping it around the hoop on the left side of my stationary strand and I'm just gonna loop it around and pull it tight. Then I'm taking that same end and I'm pulling it around the right side, but this time I'm gonna pull the end of my yarn through that loop that we just created. And this is what is going to create that knot at the bottom of your wall hanging. I don't even know what that knot is called. I'm sure there's a technical name for it. But I'm gonna continue to do this adding on my green strings and then I'm going to add on a set of my black. So I have three white, one of the braid and then three of the black. So once I have those on, now we're gonna move on to the other side. And this time I'm going to start with my black and we're gonna work our way backwards. And that's what's going to give us that kind of design. And I am just putting my black strand just straight over, crop, over top of that first set that we made. And it's just going to create a little diagonal. I'm gonna add on three more of my black strands and then go on to my green. And this time I am going to add some beads on to the green strand, the very first green strand. And these are 10 millimeter beads and I just string them along until I get to the very bottom. And I did wanna make sure this was nice and tight so that my beads were not going to sag from being a little bit heavier. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing at the bottom, creating my knot, but this time I'm making sure that, that that one is super tight just so that my beads don't start to sag. And then I'm just going to work my way backwards, adding my green, adding my braid, and then adding my white. Once all of my yarns are added to the hoop, I just take a dowel rod, a really long one that I just had laying around, and I held it up to create a diagonal so I know where I want to cut my strings. I did skip over the braids because I wanted to tie the knot a little bit higher so that I could just cut it off at the knot. And that was it for this piece. It was actually really easy, even though I know I explained it a little bit complicated, I'm sure, but it really was not hard at all to create. And it only took me about maybe 20 minutes once I had all of my yarns cut. That was the most time consuming part. For 
project number three, I have this vase I also found at the Goodwill for $4.99. It is huge and it is very heavy. So after I got it home and started taking the stickers off, I realized there was another one on the bottom, the original sticker. It was from Kohl's and originally $40. So I definitely got a good deal on this. I'm going to start out by cleaning this piece with my crud cutter. I don't always show it, but just know that I do clean my pieces when I bring them home from the thrift store to get off any of that disgusting bacteria, grossness, whatever is all over this piece. Once I had it all clean, I'm taking my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and I'm going to start painting this and I'm painting in all different directions. I want this to be very messy. So I want to give it like a slight texture, but I don't want to do like the whole baking soda or adding anything to the paint. I'm just going to give it a very slight texture by going in all different directions, giving it three separate layers of white paint. I might have given it four. After I added my layers of white paint, then I took a sponge that I just got in a pack from the clearance section at Michael's, cut it up into some smaller pieces, and I'm going to start dabbing on some various tones of brown. So this first shade that I am starting with is called Classic Caramel, Classic Caramel, however you want to pronounce it, by Apple, Apple Barrel. And one of the mistakes that I made here was using the dry sponge. So I do get smarter here in a little bit, but not quite yet. So this next color that I'm taking is Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel. And I'm just going to start layering and um, trying to blend the two colors together. Since I have the dry sponge, though, it's not working as well as I had hoped. So once I realize I need to wet the sponge, I do end up going back over all of my colors and it blends a lot better. So learn from my mistakes and use a wet sponge to start with. So the third color that I'm taking is called Coffee Bean and this one is from Folk Art. So this is just a little bit of a deeper brown. So I'm going for a gradient effect here on my piece. Um, once I have all of those colors laid down, I do just take a tiny bit of black to richen up the very bottom of this because you can kind of see like I have the colors not only like going in a gradient, but they're kind of like thicker and thinner in some areas as well. So here's where I got smart and wet my sponges and then I did go back over all of my colors adding them a little bit more and blending them together with my wet sponge and that just made it look a lot more uh, like a gradient effect. So you can see that here, how much better it looks. Once I got to the top, I wanted it to have more of a seamless transition instead of like that stippling look. So I just added some more of my white paint and then a dry brush and I just kept going back and forth until I made it look a little bit more effortless. And that was it for this piece. I really love this grouping that I put together inside of my entryway. I think the mirror behind it just really elevates this table and makes it look a little more high end. And like I bought all of these pieces from the store. Um, two of these I made, everything was thrifted. Other than the mirror, that actually was part of my bathroom vanity that I didn't want in the bathroom. For project number four, we are making this tiered hanging shelf. This is probably the most involved project in today's video because I did use quite a few power tools, but I will also show you how you can make it with Dollar Tree products. So I'm starting out with this plywood board that's a quarter inch thick I had laying around in my garage and you need to cut it down to be 12 inches by 14. I cut mine a little bigger because I didn't know what size I needed at first. But once I have that cut down and then I'm ripping my boards using the table saw so that I have three boards that are 14 inches by 4 inches wide. Once I had my three boards cut down, then I'm marking the edges off and I'm going to cut them all down to be different lengths. The first one I kept at that 14 by 4 inches, the next one I cut down to 12 inches, and the third one I cut down to be 10 inches so that they all vary by 2 inches. And this time I am using my table saw 
Is that what this one is? I don't even know all the names for these things, you guys. Once I had them, I did sand them down. I didn't show that part, but then I gave them a thin coat of ivory chalk paint. I didn't give this full coverage. I was fine with that wood grain showing through, but you could also make this, if you didn't have scrap wood or all of those saws um, available to you, you could use those MDF signs that the Dollar Tree sells. Um, they come with like three narrow rectangular boards and you could just take those apart and cut them down to different widths and there you go. So once I had the boards painted, I just marked a uh, where I wanted to drill my holes. They were a half an inch in from the top and from the side. And I did that on all four corners on all three of my boards. Next, I'm taking my macrame cord and I'm cutting down four strands that are 36 inches long each. Once I have those cut, I am going to string them through my boards, starting with the longest one first and I'm gonna tie a knot at the bottom. And I just left enough hanging to where I wanted the little fringe tassel to, for however long I wanted that to be at the bottom. And I did double knot this just to make sure it wasn't gonna come through that hole that we drilled. And we're gonna do that to all four corners. This was the easy part. Next comes the hard part of trying to make sure all of my boards are level. So I took my 12 inch board, strung my macrame through the holes there, and then I wanted to figure out how high I wanted the next board to hang off of the first. So I should have, now looking back at it, took a little piece of tape or a marker or something and marked where my board was then level and where it was going to sit on my macrame cords. I wasn't smart when I did this. I just eyeballed it and I ended up having to play around with it quite a bit to make it so that all of my knots were level and or in the same spot so that my board was at least sitting level. So save yourself some time and some headache with trying to figure that out and just mark off the macrame on all four of your strings in the first place. But I just repeated that process for the top board and I don't think I show it, but once I had everything strung through, I just gathered all four of my macrame cords together and tied a simple knot the same way that I'm doing with all of these, just a basic not to hold everything together. So you can see me struggling, trying to figure out where each knot needs to be and just kind of eyeballing it. And it was definitely a lot more difficult than it needed to be. And I also saw Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. She recently created a tiered hanging shelf and hers was so cool. I'm going to link it down below for you guys because she used all Dollar Tree products and it turned out amazing. So once I finally had that figured out, I'm just taking this boho style um, ribbon that is from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued it around only three of the sides. I didn't do the back. I probably should have so that it was kind of a buffer against my wall and doesn't scratch it up at all, but I didn't end up doing the back. And that's it for this one. It really wasn't too complicated. And if you use Dollar Tree supplies, this would take you no time at all to create. And again, I just love the simplicity of this. I love the neutral colors. I really need to get out of my comfort zone with sticking with these neutral whites, tans, and blacks. I need to do something more fun and exciting for you guys. But anyways, that's it for today. Let me know which one was your favorite, and I'll see you in the next one.